district. As a newcomer community, the majority of us speak a primary language other than English. El Cajon is a major refugee resettlement hub and is likely to resettle more refugees over the next year. It's critical that El Cajon is mapped with other refugee and immigrant communities in the county to ensure that we receive the representation and services that we need. I see myself in community with City Heights, Lemon Grove, La Mesa, Rancho San Diego, Paradise Hill, Spring Valley, and Encanto, and Skyline. El Cajon and City Heights specifically are my community with fellow people of color, immigrant, and refugee community members. Thank you. Thank you. Amina Radwan, followed by Leila Zabinden. Yes, hi. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Amina Radwan and I'm an Arab community member of El Cajon. We practice many religions, but most of all, we are immigrants and refugees. I would like the city of El Cajon to be kept whole and would like to be included with City Heights, Southeast San Diego, La Mesa, Spring Valley, and Rancho San Diego. We do not want to be mapped with other East County cities. El Cajon is dramatically changing and demographics are a lot different than 30 years ago. I urge you to keep El Cajon with other refugee and BIPOC communities. It is critical that El Cajon is mapped with other refugee and immigrant communities in the county to ensure that we receive the representation and services we desperately need for successful resettlement. I'm in support of draft map 14. Thank you. Thank you. Z Z uh, Layla Zabinden followed by 1285. Hi, um, I'm here with Yazin Zaza. Can we speak as a group um, and have our time extended? Sure, are you both speaking? Yes. Okay, go ahead. We have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Yazin's gonna go first. Hello, my name is Yazan Zaza, and I am a longtime community member of San Diego. I currently work as a lecturer for San Diego State University and CSU San Marcos. I have spent many years doing research on the refugee experiences in San Diego County, as well as El Cajon. And what we have come to find is that at the current moment, given the massive changes in population over the recent years, there are not adequate resources to address the growing needs of community members in El Cajon. Specifically, instances of violence in El Cajon County against Muslim youth, as well as hate crimes against adults are inadequately or inadequately addressed by El Cajon County. City Heights, on the other hand, has many resources that have been developed to be able to address these instances. It is for this reason and many others that I am in support of draft map 14, protect the interests and the safety of our immigrant communities. And then I am also in support of um, draft map 14. I think it's important to note that the demographics of El Cajon have changed dramatically in the last 10 years with the influx of a lot of Syrian refugees um, who have a very different needs uh, than the Chaldean immigrant community that exists today. Um, and I think that the refugee experiences that are in City Heights most closely reflect the realities that our Syrian refugees um, have today. And um, it just makes more logical sense to have all the refugee communities who share similar experiences clumped in one like district, honestly. Um, so that's actually, that's actually it. Thank you. Yeah. 1285 followed by Juan Vargas. 1285. Hello, how are you doing? Good, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. My name is Nicholas Mika. I'm an El Cajon resident for more than 20 years. Uh, I'm one of the Chaldean community also. And, uh, as you know, the county of San Diego, uh, East County of San Diego, has its own uh, history and its own culture. It's not about the Chaldeans only, but uh, all the fellow citizens. And as I can hear through the microphone, uh, there's a lot of hate. And uh, uh, how you say it? Uh, there's a lot of hate and and and, uh, and a lot of people's voice. They think we try to separate from the other Americans. This is not the point. It's just we're trying to keep the East County together, as it is in in the, in the map. It's for our own good, for our own culture, you know, for everything. <clears throat> so basically, if we keep the map as is, it's going to be benefiting everybody. It's not about hate thank you. or, uh, thank you. Thank you. Juan Vargas followed by Kevin Stevenson. 
Hello, can you all hear me? Yes. All right, uh, so my name is Juan Vargas, a resident of Escondido. Uh, earlier comments were made that some folks fear that they might fall in a district where they feel not represented by the person who's currently in that seat that they're representing, but welcome to my community that we've been living uh, through the last 10 years. We cannot be short-sighted and focus on who are in our current seats with supervisors, um, but we can work together and we could actually make the necessary changes to ensure the communities of interest are being heard. This is an easy way out and gerrymandering by definition. So although not perfect, map 13A will provide the best representation for North County and respects the communities of interest in North County, which includes our immigrant community, Latino, AAPI, African American, Native American, and LGBTQ communities in North County as well. Community members who require services and support in rural areas like Bonzel, Pala, Fallbrook, and, fall, and are parallel to the same needs of those in Escondido, San Marcos, Vista, and Oceanside. Excluding them from a single voice that is inclusive Thank of you. all of these areas is not in the spirit of the Voting Rights Act Thank and you. not provide an equal opportunity for honest representation. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin Stevenson, followed by Hadil Karim. Hi, uh, yes, this is Kevin Stevenson. Um, so a lot of people have already made the point, including uh, Juan just made it, that it is crucial to keep Escondido, San Marcos, Oceanside, Fallbrook, Bonzel, Valley Center, and a bunch of other communities in the similar area uh, of North County together uh, to make sure that there isn't any dilution of the general population. Um, it's important to keep our Latino and indigenous communities together in one district. Um, and it's also very important that we see uh, representation that is more representative of the people who live out here because uh, as Juan just hinted at, Escondido really has not been represented uh, in the last 10 years and it's important that we get better representation. Thank, Thank you. you. Adil Kareem followed by Billy Joe Janin. Um, good evening, Commissioner. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, my name is Hadil Karim, and I am an Iraqi refugee who works as the community support navigator with Medjal Center on Main Street in Al Cajon. I work with Arab community who mainly live in Al Cajon. We share um, some um, the same cultural practice, food, language, and shared values. I encourage you to keep Al Cajon, Rancho San Diego, City Heights, and Spring Valley together, as most of our community live there and not to separate our community, please. And I also support draft map 14. Thank you so much. Thank you. Billy Joe Jannon, followed by Judy Schur. Hello, I'm Billy Joe Jannon in Campo, as some of you might know. Um, Mr. Adelson correctly pointed out that race is not supposed to be the predominant factor in making these districts. It's communities of interest overall. District one is a Hispanic majority with or without the back country. Map 14 is brutal to us because it folds us into a district of people with whom we have no commonality whatsoever. Um, I think that the first speaker on the first agenda item tonight illustrated quite clearly why that would be a brutal thing to do to us. There are people there that dislike us and dismiss us without even knowing who we are. So listen to the Chaldeans and listen to the back country. Put us back in an East County district, put, the, put El Cajon back in an East County district, and you will have the population flexibility to deal with the problems that are continually raised by the new coalition. Thank you. Judy Schuer, followed by Sarah Hassani. Hi, my name is Steve Schuer. I'm over here at Lakeside 32. Judy, we can barely hear you. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, can you time, start me timing over? Sure. Thanks. My name is Judy Schur. I'm a resident of Lakeside for over 60 years. I support map 13A, but it still excludes El Cajon. El Cajon and Rancho San Diego need to stay together in East County. Our economies are completely intertwined. I can't speak for immigrants, of course, but you have heard from the Chaldeans in particular who clearly identify with East County and their economies are tied to us. 
Not all immigrants are the same or share the same culture. Please recognize this fact and allow East County to keep together. East County should include El Cajon and Rancho San Diego. Another point is I work with the homeless in Lakeside and I coordinate with El Cajon on homeless issues and we need to work together in the same district. Then there is the issue of the city of San Diego being included in East County. This area does not share school district, community events, fire protection or water district. It doesn't make sense to include it in East County. Please adopt map 13A and amend it to include El Cajon and Rancho San Diego and remove the city of San Diego. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah Hassani followed by Ryan Darcy. Hi, commissioners. My name is Sarah and I'm a part of the Arab and immigrant community. I'm in support of map 14, which would maintain El Cajon, a single district with City Heights, Lemon Grove, La Mesa, Rancho San Diego, Paradise Hills, Spring Valley, Encanto, and Skyline communities. It is very disheartening to see members of my own community who identify as Arabs and immigrants opposing this map, which would only support our communities and ensure that we are properly represented and our nuanced needs are uh, addressed. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Brian Darcy, followed by Andrew Hayes. Uh, hello, commissioners, and thank you so much for your service. Uh, my name is Ryan Darcy. I have lived in East County my entire life. Um, there is a reason a strong majority of residents made up of the broadest and most diverse coalitions are urging you to support map 14 tonight. It is the only map that makes sense for our county and our communities. 60% is legally better than 40%. Please listen to the will of the people and adopt map 14. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Hayes, followed by Lyndon Brooks. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for all your hard work. Andrew Hayes, um, Lakeside School Board trustee. I'm speaking in my official capacity. Uh, I wanna thank you for everything that you guys have done. Uh, I know you're hearing a lot of comments tonight. And I also know that uh, as a school board member, it's been a crazy year of public comment for us too. So I, I, I totally understand where you're at. Um, anyway, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to thank you for that. And I just wanna talk about effective governance for a moment. moment. Matt 14, puts together the unincorporated communities into basically one supervisor's district. And I wanna, under, I wanna underscore what that means for that supervisor. All of the different JPAs, different government agencies that are required to provide effective services to their constituents, that's a huge deal. And so I just wanna underscore that, you know, in addition to communities of interest, we, we must think about that. It's very critical and we've heard a lot of that tonight but we really have to think about delivering effective governance. And that's something that I think is important to underscore. Thank you. Thank you. Lyndon Brooks, followed by Preston Brown. Lyndon Brooks, go ahead. We, I see that you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Hello? Are you there? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. I support for the most part uh, map 13A, except for the redistricting boundaries for the communities of El Cajon, Rancho San Diego, and Spring Valley moving away from District 2. The following planning groups should also remain within the district and not be divided. Crest, Harvesting Canyon, Dehesa, and Granite Hills, Homo, Lakeside, Ramona, and Alpine. The boundaries between the unincorporated areas, small rural coys in the city of El Cajon, Rancho San Diego, and Spring Valley should remain together. Those communities support children from the unit, Grossmont Union High School District and the Cone Valley Union School District. Their established bus routes and that are all within the above cities. And the East County Indian Reservation students attend these school districts also. Tax dollars collected have contributed to amenities and resources providing K through 12 adult ed community colleges, hospital health care services. Thank you. Preston Brown followed by Janet Mulder. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Preston Brown and I'm a resident of Amul for 20 years and the vice chair of the Amul Desert Community Planning Group for 14 years. And I'm speaking as an individual. This is a strange evening. Unite us versus don't divide us. Map 14 found some favor with coastal residents for uniting their communities, but the unincorporated East County of Amul Desert to the east illogically is separated from our rural backcountry communities to the north. This divides. 
The idea of a border region uh, and how it would unify the border is a fantasy. No such border region or district exists. This idea and phrase is unknown to people that live in the border areas and the unincorporated county. Over the last three decades, a hard line has been forming between the civilization of East Lake Chula Vista and the wilderness and conservation areas to the east. Almost all East County is in the very high fire hazard severity zone and the danger of wildfire and choked evacuation routes of small Thank rural you. highways has shaped the goals and concerns of each Thank county you. for planning a united, a strong community. Thank you. Janet Mulder, followed by JP The Burge. Hi. Meeting password. Yes. I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> Commissioners, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you. you First, please numbers. let me please take a second to thank you for all the time and energy that you guys have dedicated to this important work that will have such an impact in the future of our communities. As you said, my name is Janet Mulder. I'm a 50 year resident of our rural unincorporated community of Hamul, and I've been an elected member of the Hamul Desert Community Planning Group since its inception. But I'm speaking today just as an individual. I've been attending your meetings virtually, and I'm pleased to see that you have at least some of your new maps like 13A has an advantage of grouping most of our East County communities together who share so many interests together. But please re-look at why you have separated us from our closest neighbors with whom we have so much in common, including Rancho San Diego, Spring Valley, and El Cajon, and you put them with North Park, I assume searching for a cultural population balance. But please consider looking at the importance of our sharing of cultural, social, and economic interests and keeping East County together. We really appreciate Thank all you. your time, effort, and energy. Thank you. Thank you. JP the Burge, followed by Basim Obeid. Yes, I'm actually part of a group presentation. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Are the other members of your group with you? Yes, uh, I've got John, uh, John Dummer, um, and uh, he should be on the line as well. Okay, I'll go ahead and allow him to speak as well. You have three minutes to address the commission. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, for, for the opportunity to speak. My name is JP Thaberge, and I'm the chair of the Elfin Forest Harmony Grove Town Council, uh, speaking on their behalf, representing the northernmost unincorporated rural communities in the San Diego planning area, where a small, tight knit, century old rural valley stretching along the Escondido Creek from the borders of San Marcos and Encinitas to the borders of Escondido. The majority of our communities in the same fire district, the same county service areas, the same community planning group. Same Fire Safe Council, same community foundation, participate in the same 4th of July parade going on 40 years and are represented by the same town council. We truly thank the commission for listening to comments from our many community responses requesting to not be split into two different districts. This is reflected in some of the current draft maps, 13A, 1 through 6, and 14 version 1. We fully expect and appreciate to continue to see our, our community consolidated in the final maps moving forward. Another issue or concern that we have is that our community has always been at the intersection of a North County and a coastal district bordering Encinitas, Olivenheim, Rancho Santa Fe, Escondido, and San Marcos. In the context of various maps that have been presented, there appears to have been an attempt by an anonymous unity mapping coalition and some other surrogates to gerrymander us into an East County district with whom we have no historical connection or linkage. We have no connection or linkage to East County and we strenuously object to being placed in such a district, especially by folks who have no connection to our community. We socialize, attend school, worship, shop, receive health care, and participate in coastal and North County civic events. We have coastal and North County values, conservation, open space preservation, concerns about the omnipresent threat of wildfire that has destroyed hundreds of homes in our community. As recently as seven years ago, we lost 30 homes. We have no historical, jurisdictional, political, or civic connection with East County communities such as Santee, Lakeside, Alpine, Ramona, as great as they might be. We are a small community and we could easily be moved into any of the districts without exceeding the deviation. We will ask to keep our community united and to not gerrymander us into East County. If map 13 moves forward, we prefer 13A1-6, otherwise 14 version one. Regardless, we would ask that whichever map moves forward, we remain a united community and we be placed in the coastal district preferably, or if infeasible, into a North County district. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Dummer. Uh, I have lived in Harmony Grove uh, for over 55 years. 
As a resident of Harmony Grove, I believe it is in our best interest to keep Harmony Grove, Elfin Forest, and Union Valley together in the same district under one supervisor um, uh, who, gives, who has the opportunity to represent our needs uh, to the board. Uh, Harmony Grove, Elfin Forest, and Union Valley have a long history of working together on events, maintaining roads and trails, preserving our shared watershed, and coming together to plan for or to recover from wildfires. Uh, wildfires may be the most important reason we need to be kept in Thank the you. same district. Thank you, your time has expired. Basim Obeid, followed by David Langstein. Good evening. My name is Basim Obeid. I live in Spring Valley. Please, I like to keep my own city with Spring Valley, with Rancho Santiago, with City High. Thank you. Thank you. David Langstein, followed by Rawan Obeid. David Langstein, you may need to unmute yourself. We're not hearing you, David Langstein, and I'm showing you as being muted. I'm gonna come back to you. Ramad Obeid, followed by Luis Higinio. Hello. Yes. My name is Rawan Obeid. I'm Muslim Arab. I live in Spring Valley. I request that you guys please leave El Cajon with City Heights and Rancho San Diego and Spring Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Luis Higuerino, followed by David Langstein. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Hello. My name is Luis Higuerino. I'm born and raised in Fallbrook, California a doctoral student at UCR in the Department of Sociology. I am speaking today as a community member in support of MAP 13A version 1-6 version, uh, or MAP 13A version 5, which places the regions of Escondido, San Marcos, Vista, Oceanside, and unincorporated areas of greater Fallbrook and modified to include tribal lands in the eastern portion of the county together. Our community share historical legacies, important resources, and social services that keeps residents thriving. We share economies, healthcare services, fire and safety services, educational programs and colleges, transportation services, agriculture, as well as social and cultural ties. To separate any of these communities in county supervisor elections is to dilute our voting power and ignore our cohesive and long-standing communities of interest. We urge you to adopt MAP 13A version 1-6 or MAP 13A version 5 that keeps Escondido, San Marcos, Vista, Oceanside, and unincorporated areas of greater Fallbrook and tribal lands in the eastern portion of the county together. Thank you for your time. Thank you. David Langstein, followed by Luis Higuinio. David Langstein, uh, you need to unmute yourself. I'm showing you as being muted. Okay, come back to you. Nahia Obeid, followed by Tazi Nizam. Nahia Obeid, I'm showing you, go ahead. Good evening. My name is Nihaya Ubaid. I am an Arab Muslim. I live in Spring Valley. I would like you guys to leave El Cajon City with Spring Valley and Rancho San Diego and City Heights. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tazin Nizam. Good evening, commissioners. I'm speaking beha on behalf of the Communities Together Coalition today uh, as an individual, not just as a group. My name, uh, I, I've lived in Vista for about 16 years and uh, the communities around Vista, Carlsbad, Oceanside, San Marcos, Escondido are a vital part of uh, the communities of interest that I belong to, which is the Muslim community, the immigrant community. And hence, we request that you keep these communities together because not only are we tied by our faith, but we holiday together, we pray together, and we attend all these functions together. So we need to be together. The immigrant com Muslim community in North County needs to be kept together, which includes the cities of Carlsbad and Escondido. And also, it is very important that the 78 have a common interest. So when we, bar when we sit and talk about our common goals, we are a united front. Thank you. 
Thank you, Patty Medina, followed by Mustafa Nizam. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, thank you. Sorry, thank you for, uh, thank you commissioners for to hard work and hearing us. I am representing ACE Group and I'm part of the Communities Together Coalition in support, supporting the I. RRC draft map 14. And I live, I've been living in Sherman Heights near downtown area for 40 years. Many of the communities in the Bay Area have families across the border, and we share the same social and economic necessities, traditions, cultural aspects, and problems. The map 14 represents the majority of Latinos and diverse flavors, the community, and mutual goals and issues. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you. Heidi Medina, followed by Mustafa Nazim. Mustafa Nazim, followed by Seska. Thank you uh, for, for, thank you to the commissioners for your tireless work. I'm calling in support of MAP 14. My name is Mustafa Nizam, and I've lived in Vista for the last 17 years, and I'm an outreach manager for the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE. After months of community education regarding redistricting in the Muslim community, we asked community members to plot where they live on community maps. We found that they are spread all over a large area in North County, including Carlsbad and especially Escondido. Including these cities keeps the diversity of the immigrant AAPI and Latino communities together. I urge the commission to move forward with map 14 with some modifications. Lastly, thank you to my friends at PANA, the Partnership for Advancement on New Americans for the advocacy and the, that they have done for immigrants and refugees and the work they have done in the redistricting process. Thank you. Thank you. Seska followed by David Langstein. Hello, this is Seska Kabuhat. I live in Hillcrest and I'm a volunteer of Asian Solidarity Collective in support of refining Map 14, um, mostly to maximize AAPI voting power in coastal districts by keeping Mira Mesa, Rancho Penasquitos, Car Carmel Valley, Miramar, Linda Vista, Kermini Mesa together as our community has shared experiences and needs. Um, also, all variations of draft map 13 divides our AAPI communities. So again, please keep Mira Mesa, Rancho Penasquitos, Carmel Valley, Miramar, Linda Vista, and Kearney Mesa intact. Thank you. Thank you. David Langstein, followed by Yasmin Obeid. David, I'm showing you as being muted. This is my third attempt. I'm afraid we're going to have to move on. Yasmin, did you not speak as part of a group earlier? It's not fair to the other speakers. No, this, to... is, this is someone else. I was logged into her Zoom account from earlier. Um, okay. Um, yeah, no, I. Uh, this is Rama. I didn't get to speak in my individual uh, slate. I spoke as a group earlier with the Mejdal Center. Um, I'm, I'm calling back in to really pose a question to the commission and to the Chaldean Council. Can we get clarification on what what is their community of interest in relationship to East County? This is what's not clear. What are the shared characteristics with East County? I, I, urge, the co I urge the commission to really get clarification on this because as someone working in the Arab community, it's very clear that refugees and immigrants there are struggling to, to access basic services. They're struggling to make ends meet. And so caving to these demands to stay with East County when it's not clear what that community of interest is, does a disservice to our community base. So I'm, I'm more so posing a question um, for clarification. It's not clear to us um, how they're defining uh, their community of interest in relationship to East County. Thank you. Thank you. Mohammed Tuama followed by 4541. Mohammed Tuama. We can't hear you. I see that you're unmuted. I'll try back. 
four five four one. Press star six to unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Steven Nisu. I spoke earlier. I would like to answer the question regarding the Chaldean community. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to remove the permission to talk. The, it's not fair to the other speakers to speak more than once. Mohammed Tuama. Lost Mohammed Tuama. Mohammed, you have one minute to address the commission. Mohammed, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, hello? I can hear you now. Yes, hello. My name is Mohammed Tuama, um, an Iraqi Middle Eastern uh, refugee in East County, El Cajon. And I'm speaking regarding the community of interest that no one is speaking about is the Middle Easterns in East County. Middle Easterns in East County should be considered as a community interest of interest because we are the same community, Iraqis, Chaldeans, Arabic, everything, even Syrian. We speak the same language. We share the same culture. We go to the same stores, churches, mosques, everything. That's why we live in East County, Santee, El Cajon, Rancho San Diego, Lakeside, La Mesa. We don't live in other places because we don't share any characteristics, even if we're our same immigrants, but we are community of interest more strong with Middle Easterns in East County. So please, when you review maps, please consider Middle Easterns in East County as a community of interest. And please do not listen to the agencies and people with the same last names who try to represent Thank you. our community. Thank you. Thank you. Not seeing any further virtual hands. Are there people present who did not speak earlier but would still like to address the commission? If there are, you're welcome to come forward to the microphone. and we came back from the break. Um, my name is Chris Heiserman, and I uh, grew up in Lemon Grove, but I uh, have lived in Spring Valley for more than 30 years. I was in the group of 60 you were chosen from, but uh, and now that I see that you have the job going, I'm glad that uh, you're doing it and not me. <laughs> anyway, I'm losing my time here. Basically, what, I, what I've heard, a lot of people uh, said map 14, um, with some tweaks or refinement. Um, but they also all said all these communities in this litany of communities, including Spring Valley, Rancho San Diego, uh, together. Um, and I heard some people recently said they were from Spring Valley and they said the same thing, they wanna keep it together. But both 13A and 14 um, split Spring Valley and South Spring Valley is included in the, in the Southern District. Um, and I think our community planning group has, has put in some uh, information about trying to keep the community together. Um, but this South Spring Valley is split in both those maps. So when you're refining it, maybe you can consider that too, because some of the people that said Thank they you. were from Spring Valley that want them all together um, might not Thank actually you. be in the district. <laughs> Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, commissioners. I really appreciate all that y'all are doing um, and have empathy for you. Um, over the past year, we've been working with a lot of different communities. We've been working with um, Hannah, Majdal Center, Pillars of the Community, Asian Solidarity Collective, and many, many other partners to engage a very diverse group of Black, Asian, East African refugee communities in City Heights, La Mesa, Spring Valley, Lemon Grove, Encanto, El Cajon, Rancho San Diego, in the redistricting process, including understanding what redistricting is, we participated in a very intentional, nonpartisan, community-driven process. I just want to call attention to the fact that people are organizing last minute to support a status quo that hasn't served my community very well. I mean, just look at the poverty rates, childhood poverty rates in El Cajon and some of these communities to understand that. And if maintained, will harm our communities and what you've seen and heard tonight is Islamophobia and anti-blackness on display. So to clarify, my Thank community you. is refugee, low income communities of color. Please support map 14. We do have a, any other pre, speakers present who would like to address the commission? 
Muy buenas noches. My name is Arcela Nunez Alvarez. I am a resident in the city of San Marcos where I have lived for nearly 40 years. Uh, today, I wanted to just share with you that as we heard earlier in the voting uh, assessment presentation, um, it became very clear to me and I think to um, you that the North County Latino community is one that has been largely disenfranchised historically. So we are asking that you consider keeping this community together. The North County Latino population is about 350,000 in, uh, in the cities of San Marcos, Vista, um, all the way into the Fallbrook Thank area. Thank you. Thank you. We have a few more virtual hands. I'll go to Rima, followed by Paulette Schaefer. Hello, Kaminisha, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Rima Mansour and I'm a member of the Chaldean community. I've lived here for over uh, 16 years in Alcohol. Our Chaldean community has thrived in East County because of the area, the hardworking residents, the schools and the community. We share many of the same economic, social and cultural values. We belong together. El Cajon is the second largest county of Chaldeans that resides and Middle Easterns that reside here. So please do not separate us, keep us together. We have nothing in common with City Heights, North Park and other uh, cities. So please keep us all here in El Cajon with our cities like um, Spring Valley, Rancho San Diego, Hamul, La Mesa and um, Santi. So please keep us here. Thank you. Thank you. Paulette Schaefer, followed by 3011. Hello. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Paulette Schaefer, and I'm a teacher, a mother, and a part of the Latinx community here up here in North County, San Diego. Um, I was born and raised here, and I've lived here my whole life and currently live in Escondido. Um, and I ask that we continue working on uh, Map 13A or 13A1 through six, um, and to ensure the Latinx community in North County is as equitably considered as the placements of predominantly white or high SES communities or places like airports. Um, there is no North County agricultural industry without the Latinx and indigenous communities here. The districts need to represent the connected communities and discontinue diluting the shared interests of things uh, like access to healthcare, education, and other regional resources. I have repeatedly heard tonight that proponents of MAP 14 achieves these goals without regard for severing the core Thank communities you. of interest like Fallbrook. Thank you, your time has expired. 3011 followed by Stephen Nissau. 3011, you should unmute your phone, go ahead. Should be, we should be able to hear you now. Hi, good evening, commissioners. My name is Suhair Arakat. I'm a doctor of behavioral health and an Arab Muslim immigrant who came to the, here in 1983. I would like the city of El Cajon to be kept whole and would like to be included with the city high Southeast San Diego, La Mesa, Spring Valley and Rancho San Diego. We do not want to be mapped with other East County cities. El Cajon is dramatically changing and demographics are a lot different than 30 years ago when I moved here. I have a lot of huge, large family that lives in El Cajon. And it's critical that El Cajon is mapped with other refugee and immigrant communities in the county to ensure that we receive the representation and services we desperately need for successful resettlement. I'm in support continuing to refine and draft MAP 14. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you. Stephen Nassau, followed by Bianca Mansour. Stephen, you may need to unmute yourself. Hello, my name is Stephen. I represent the Chaldean youth of East County. 
we are share a lot in common with all of El Cajon residents, all Middle Easterns in East County, and as Chaldeans and as Middle Easterns of El Cajon, we share in ways of living with each other in rural, rural living communities and have no relations or similarities to places or people in City Heights or North Park area. We do have similarities in culture with other Middle Easterns, but not necessarily in faith. But we are one as East County and El Cajon, and we do not discriminate. We do not have anything against anyone else but we want to be united. We are just two minutes away from each other in different areas that are being split up. It doesn't make sense. And we would like the commissioners today to please consider this strongly to not changing what was already there. This has nothing to do with poverty or with anything else or with uh, anyone else is trying to prove. Thank you. Bianca Mansour followed by 5665. Hello, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Bianca Mansour. I'm a resident of El Cajon, born and raised in this great city, received my bachelor's degree from SDSU, and now own a small business in this city. The people of Santee, Lakeside, Hamul, Spring Valley, Ramona, Rancho San Diego, and Alpine are our neighbors, and more importantly, our friends. These are the people I associate and socialize with on a daily basis. I ask you to keep El Cajon in the East County District, not Hillcrest and not City Heights. We share no common interests and the geography itself separates us. The Chaldean community came to East County and chose to become good citizens of this city. And as a Chaldean community member, my family lives here and works hard to be a good and beneficial part of this city. For an organization like PANA to claim that they represent us is absolutely false. The vast majority share no common interests with PANA El Cajon is the heart of East County and to separate our city from the rest of East County is a disruption of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five, six, six, five. Hello. Can you hear yes, me? We can hear you. Yes. My name is Sharon Haven. I've lived in East County for over 60 years and I've watched El Cajon grow. And I believe that it is still the heart of East County, as the previous caller said, and it's sort of a capital of East County. It, co it collects all of us for one reason or another. And I think that from what you've heard tonight, there are many, many people who live there who want to be part of East County still. It provides our schools for the back country. It provides our water district. And to have, uh, to have it lost to us, as well as Rancho San Diego and Spring Valley, would be a great loss. I would suggest 13A, 1 through 6, and if population shift has to be done, then take the pieces of San Diego on the 805 out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Not seeing anyone approaching the microphone presently in the chamber, not seeing any further virtual hands. That concludes public testimony in this matter. Chair Babe. Thank you. Thank you, members of the public. We're not done yet. <laughs> I'll offer more gracious comments tomorrow, um, but to the mother who had the group presentation, I want to say directly tonight, hi because I bet they're still up. All right. Um, we have the room for a little bit longer. And some of you may have seen me typing that was to go through some things and coordinate with my co-vice chairs on how we were going to proceed. My strong preference is to continue for just a few more minutes, opening agenda item nine with a note from council about an issue that came up that will have an impact on our discussion tomorrow. Then I would like to have public comment on agenda item nine that we're obliged to have. The reason I'd like to do that tonight is frankly to preserve as much time as possible for some very intensive work we have to do tomorrow. And then I would give you a very, very brief summary of what we have to, uh, how we might proceed tomorrow. So unless there's objection or question on that, Commissioner Diaz.
Can you I don't wink yet. Can you clarify specifically that item nine now? Because I would like to make sure there's no public comment we haven't missed. If we don't discuss it now and we open it tomorrow, we'll have public comment tomorrow. And given the strength of the feelings, I would not have an easy way uh, to uh, limit that conversation. Now that's perfectly permissible, but we have to allow public comment on agenda item nine. If we start that public comment tomorrow, it is going to be, i fairly confident in saying, a much longer day tomorrow. If commissioners are willing to do it that way, I'm perfectly comfortable doing that. Are we, will we continue it for tomorrow if needed? Or Not we, public are, comment, no. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're doing it. We will, it tomorrow. would be now because my sense is we have the input we need to proceed with what we've got to do tomorrow. And commissioners participating virtually, I am trying to look for you you to comment if you're if you're interested in commenting and make sure it's being understood yeah? i'm not interested i mean i mean we could do that easily tomorrow but sure babe, if, we're, if we're if we're going to do that i would i would say let's just proceed as expeditiously and not spend time um hashing this out because we're we're the, the clock is can i see strong can i see hands on who would like to close right now and start and start fresh tomorrow completely no okay close right now and start tomorrow with public comment among other things which will extend our day tomorrow okay all right there yeah that for me is not enough for a motion so i'm going to proceed accordingly so on agenda item nine council are you with us marguerite I am chair. Can't find my video, but I'm. It's okay. Go ahead. I'm here. Can you hear me? The video is just kind of off. Uh, would you like me to, at this point, address the uh, the numbering? Yes, please. Okay. Um, it, it, it's uh, you have to adopt numbering with your plan, and I've provided to the commission a very short memo about numbering principles. And I will uh, just uh, give a very brief introduction now, and we can talk about it more tomorrow during the meeting. Uh, first of all, there's no law that governs this, but there are standards ways to do it. And that is the way it has been going forward. Uh, but the result of that process has caused some confusion. Generally, the principle being applied is to try to keep the same number of voters on their same election schedule uh, uh, under the new map as they are under the old. So that's the principle that's being applied. And so the numbers that are being applied uh, basically looks to the core of the population, the majority of the population in the new district, where does it come from? So that's what's going on. I think we need to look at that very closely as you start uh, zeroing down in your maps. It's a common way of doing things. It's been mentioned in California Supreme Court case law. Um, how that affects incumbencies is not something that is uh, in your consideration. However, generally under California law applicable to other supervisorial redistricting, terms are not cut short by a change in district boundaries. Everybody serves out their elected term. As a term, for example, for the supervisor in District 5 ends, then the new District 5 would be up. And that's how it's specified for other counties. It's a good way and should apply to you. There's no reason that it should not. And then if somebody happens to be outside of the dis their district, it's not your concern. We don't consider that. They have many options including deciding to run early or moving. So that's uh, pretty much how the district uh, numbering is running. And we just a little bit of preview. 
I provided a little written memo to you that you can study overnight. And if necessary, we can uh, discuss in detail in the morning. Anything more on that, uh, Chair? Not for me, and I'll respectfully ask commissioners to save any questions or comments on that for tomorrow, because I think it'll be important to integrate the conversation. But I did want to address it tonight, especially for uh, members of the public because of some of the public comments we heard and make sure uh, that we had the benefit of council's advice. Okay. Yeah, on that, if we if needed, uh, Commissioner Serban just asked if we'll hear more from council tomorrow about that. Um, we certainly can, and we can find a way to integrate it into the conversation that I will describe in just a moment. But before I do that, under this item, agenda item nine, communities of interest update and maps submitted by the public presentation and discussion of IRC draft maps, including all the variations of 13 and 14, and discussion and possible selection of the preferred draft map and possible direction to flow analytics regarding IRC preferred draft map. David, are there any requests from the public to speak on this agenda item? Not in advance of today's meeting, but if any member of the public would like to address the commission, you're welcome to do so. Those present can approach the microphone. Those participating remotely, please raise a virtual hand. Not seeing any movement in the chamber, I do see a couple of virtual hands. We'll start with Stephen Nizel. And uh, time limit will be one minute. You have one minute to address the commission. Stephen Nizel, uh, you need to unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Yes, I'd like to address um, the commissioners to please reconsider the zoning um, on the map and to really consider keeping El Cajon as part of East County. Thank you. Mohamed Tuama, followed by Esther Sanchez. Good evening, uh, commission members. Um, Want to say that, um, again, Middle Eastern community is better considered as community of interest because the obvious, obvious shared uh, common interest between Middle Eastern and even El Cajon is called like the like Baghdad, little Baghdad. That's been here for years, but now we want it to have this. We have people in Santee, Lakeside and other places in East County. So we want our community, Middle Eastern community of East County to stay together as Middle Eastern, regardless of the politics and everything, Middle Eastern, Chaldean, Arabic, Muslim, everyone, 93% of them support staying together with Lakeside and La Mesa and Santee. Please consider Middle Eastern in East County as community of interest. And please read the e-comments where say Middle Easterns for East County. There are hundreds of comments because we heard of this progress process late. We never informed earlier Thank you. about this thing. Thank you. Esther Sanchez. Thank you, good evening, commissioners. Is this the appropriate time since you did get um, some uh, advice about the numbering of the districts um, to go ahead and address that? Because um, basically I think um, I, I mentioned it earlier um, in the day, <laughs> the afternoon that um, I, I noticed the confusion and I was confused too. So I would strongly recommend and, and request and urge that you uh, that you do the numbering per 14 um, into 13A. I, I can't tell you how many calls I got that I was disenfranchising uh, people because I was forcing them to go uh, to have a different um, uh, elected official. And uh, it just, so so I think if we could just get, get it all consistent and apply the 14 numbering to the 13A, and I'm still supporting 13A. So thank you so much for your consideration and for staying up so long. Thank you. Thank you. 4767 followed by Ross Pike. Hello, commissioners. Uh, this is Marlon. In regards to communities of interest, someone had earlier in the proceedings brought up uh, pose the question to the committee. Now I want to pose a question as well. Just to leave, leave a, another lingering thought. There's been lots of talks about Middle Eastern communities in Eastern the East County of San Diego. One person brought up why they shouldn't be brought in together as some kind of monolith. One thing I would like to say is that we have heard 
from well over 70, 80, maybe 100 Chaldean Americans. Every single one of those has said, keep East County intact. The only ones who are saying the opposite are people who are not a part of the community of interest of Chaldean Americans in East County. I just want to keep that thought amongst the committee. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ross Pike, followed by Isra Omar. Hello, commissioners. I just want to echo the comments made by Mayor Sanchez that I do still support MAPS uh, 13A, those variations, but I do urge a reevaluation of the district numbers to address concerns, and concerns of disenfranchisement, um, but also ask again that Fallbrook be included in the North County District since we are in fact north of the 76 and 78 corridor cities that were mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. The only other virtual hand um, is one that I called on at the beginning of this item. So that concludes public testimony in this matter. Okay, so thank you for those comments. Tomorrow, just to introduce how we'll begin, we'll start with the uh, briefing from Flow Analytics that will be primarily on COI update and any uh, further developments or thoughts regarding the maps, but that should be fairly quick. I would then turn to commissioners for one minute statements to include, but not be limited to, what map you would prefer to work from. The reason I'm limiting it to one minute is because immediately after that, unless there's some emerging majority or consensus to work from one map, we will probably go to a thematic discussion on four topics, basically geographic areas, where we will cover all the issues that are still before us and that I think have been discussed very well tonight. Uh, those discussions will be led on an alternating basis by the co-vice chairs. So, Co-Vice Chair Garcia will start with one on North County, uh, Co-Vice Chair Katarina on East County, Co-Vice Chair Garcia again on South County, Co-Vice Chair uh, Katarina on Central County to include uh, the coastal areas, or at least most of them. That should enable us to have the kind of broad discussion I think we need to have. We can talk more about that structure tomorrow and what comes after it, but that's the current plan. And I promise to allow time to discuss that and understand it more. With that in mind, unless there are any procedural questions of urgency, seeing none, um, we'll continue the meeting tomorrow via Zoom with no in-person location to begin promptly at 10 a.m. I want to remind members of the public that your input remains welcome. While the deadline for public submittal of maps and COI input via the community builder and district scenario, scenario modeler tools was today, there are other ways to continue sharing your thoughts with the IRC, including submitting e-comments via our website, www.drawyourcommunity.com. Thanks again for attending today's meeting and hearing, including those still online virtually. 85 people still with us, ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. And we'll do the motion to continue in just a moment. Thank you. All right. So I do need a motion formally to continue the meeting to tomorrow at 10 a.m. And to table the current item nine until the commission reconvenes tomorrow. Motion by Commissioner Chen, second by Commissioner Larson. David, do we need a roll call on this vote? We or... do. I'm sorry? We do. Please go ahead. Commissioner Serban? No. Commissioner Dostal? Aye. Co-Vice Chair Katarina, I believe is absent. Commissioner Diaz? Commissioner, Lars Commissioner Larson? Aye. Chair Bame? Aye. Co-Vice Chair Garcia? Aye. Commissioner Pons? Aye. Commissioner Russ? Aye. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Commissioner Kruglia? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. The motion passes with Commissioner Serban voting no. All other commissioners who are present voting aye. Very good. So we are now adjourned as of 10.20 oh, p.m. David, I'm sorry, please. Go ahead. Rosette, go ahead. It's Com Commissioner Krugliak. 
I'm sorry. Um, I was just wondering if um, if any of the commissioners who are unable to attend at 10 o'clock tomorrow might be able to make their statement now. Their one minute statement. We are technically adjourned if, but I haven't actually adjourned the meeting as such because I didn't complete the motion. Um, I'd be willing to consider it unless there's objection because of commissioners who might feel they're not going to be present then. If there's objection, I want to be fair on all sides. We can't hear Commissioner Serban. We can't hear what you're saying. Sorry, Commissioner Serban asked, why would it be doing it now? I was clarifying that Commissioner Krugliak's question was, if I understood it right, if a commissioner thought they were going to be absent tomorrow, during the one minute statements, could they do the one minute statement right now? Commissioner Brown. Um, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't able to stay at the meeting till the end. And I asked if I could put in my two cents before that. And I wasn't able to do that. I had to be physically there to make the vote. So I don't know if that means the same thing as, as putting in your one minute statement on things, but I think if they're, they should be there to be able to speak there. We have a mix. We we have a mixed record on that. I have to admit, um, Commissioner Krugliak, I think the fairest thing to do would be: could you send? Could you type it up, send it to staff, and ask staff to circulate it to commissioners? Would that be acceptable? Sure. Let's do it that way. Co Vice Chair Garcia? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, to me, that's a very fine distinction that makes no sense. I don't know why Commissioner, I have no objection to Commissioner Kukliak um, making her okay. statement. Okay. 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 And it's, it's, fine. She's, it's, not, it's she's not, she's not voting. Fine. I just figured that it wasn't just me. Yeah. I, I'm not voting, but I just, you're not voting. You're I it, it that's different. Me. You're not asking to, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's pause. Is there objection to Commissioner Krugliak to delivering her one minute statement right now? No. I have no objection. Commissioner Krugliak, please go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say um, thank you for the feedback. I, um, I support moving forward from uh, map 14. I do think we should make significant changes to it though. And I'd like us during the discussions tomorrow, um, everyone who will be there to be open to making um, changes, even though there's a lot of things we've just taken as fact up to this point, they need not be. Over and over again, we heard um, you know, the, the BIPOC community really defining their region and it didn't include half of the Pana district. It didn't include Hillcrest, it didn't include Mission Hills, it didn't include North Park, it didn't include South Park. And so just assuming that we have no leverage there when we really want to keep coys together. They're two separate, they're different coys. Um, same thing with, with North County. And we've also made assumptions that we have to have a coastal district, but in the same way that the Pana district really forces our hand, a coastal district forces our hand. And in the interest of protecting Northern Latino districts, we might be willing to give that up. And I just, I know we're right on the edge of time, but I think we've heard enough that I think we can get to a better mix of maps if we don't hold fast to some of the things that we've just taken as fact up to this point. Very good. Thank you for that. Thank you, commissioners. So with that, again, sorry. Okay. So with that, we are now adjourned. With under the continuance, we will return to agenda item nine at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. This meeting is adjourned at 1024. Thank you. <laughs>